When it comes to anxiety, you are doing it to yourself. This might be a tough pill to swallow, but I'm going to tell you why it's true and why it's a pill worth swallowing. Hi, my name's Tim Lindeberg, and I'm a master's degree qualified psychotherapist. In this video, I'll be exploring the fight or flight response and how you inadvertently fire off this response on a regular basis. If you can understand how the fight or flight response works, and become consciously aware of how you are unintentionally triggering it off, then it'll put you into a position of power to rise above the clutches of a struggle with anxiety. So stick around. The fight or flight response, also known as the stress response, is our innate survival mechanism that has served to ensure the survival of humans for hundreds of thousands of years. This is where the body initiates rapid physiological changes to enhance its strength and speed, preparing it for potential combat or escape. It's essential to understand that the fight or flight response encompasses a range of reactions, including fighting, fleeing, and freezing. These responses are not merely reserved for life-threatening situations involving predators like grizzly bears or lions, they can also be activated in response to perceived or imagined threats. For example, when approaching a raging river, we need to be able to anticipate all the things that could go wrong before navigating our way across. The person who has a everything will be okay attitude is not going to survive in this world very long. The anxiety that arises as a result of mentally rehearsing worst case scenarios motivates us to take precise action in order to avoid being swept away, ultimately preserving our survival. Throughout human evolution, these survival responses have played a pivotal role in the continuation of our species. When faced with real danger, the immediate options were clear. Fight off the threat, flee from it, or freeze and hope that the predator either doesn't see you or assumes that you are dead. The fight, flight, and freeze responses have been invaluable in helping us navigate the dangers of the natural world. However, in the complexities of the modern world, the fight or flight response can be triggered, not only by real threats, but also by our perception or imagination of potential harm. When we ruminate over the possibility of being judged by others, making a mistake in a speech, losing our job or experiencing a relationship breakdown, our brain and nervous system respond as though we are under physical attack from a wild animal. In essence, we have the power to activate these survival responses within ourselves, even in situations where there is no real or immediate threat to our physical well-being. This realization is the key to understanding how anxiety and its symptoms manifest and why they continue to persist. If we can truly appreciate that the feelings of anxiety often arise as the result of our habit of envisioning threatening scenarios and subsequently triggering off the fight or flight response, we can then learn to not activate the fight or flight response unnecessarily. If we can understand this and learn to stop scaring ourselves, we will have made our first big step in taking back control of our mind. In the context of a real threat, the fight, flight, and freeze responses are all valuable survival tools. An illustrative example of these survival responses can be found in the movie The Revenant, which depicts a true story featuring a man being attacked by a grizzly bear. In this harrowing encounter, the protagonist exhibits elements of the fight, flight, and freeze response at different stages of the attack, ultimately helping him to survive the situation. If you are in real danger, then by all means, either fight, flight, or freeze. But it's important that you begin to recognize the difference between danger and discomfort if you want to break free from the chains of anxiety. As anxiety can be induced by imagined threats, we can confuse ourselves into fighting with our own feelings of anxiety. What is imperative to understand here is that anxiety, like any other emotion, serves a specific function in our lives. It is not an enemy to be battled with or defeated. It is an intuitive part of ourselves trying to convey a message. 
In the case of anxiety, it signals the need for a change in our approach to life. Had I understood this principle earlier in my life, I would have perceived anxiety as a natural, albeit uncomfortable response to my apprehensive way of navigating life's challenges. I would have realized that anxiety was trying to guide me towards living a less apprehensive, more exciting and meaningful life. In terms of the evolutionary standpoint, it further highlights the rationality of anxiety as a survival mechanism. The discomfort it brings is a small price to pay for the benefits it offers in potentially life-threatening situations. If feeling uneasy is necessary to survive, it becomes clear that anxiety is a valuable tool rather than an opponent. One of the most common misconceptions about anxiety is that it is solely a result of external factors. However, many individuals fail to realize that their own thought patterns and behaviors contribute significantly to their feelings of anxiety. Study after study has shown that the people who attribute their suffering to external factors tend to play the victim in life and subsequently disempower themselves. Whereas people who take ownership of their suffering tend to navigate their way through life struggles, resulting in increased self-confidence and resilience. If you want to start turning things around, then the next time anxiety surfaces where there is no real danger, we must logically remind ourselves that we have triggered the fight or flight response by envisioning a negative outcome. If you can at the very least catch yourself when you are doing this, you will have made a huge revelation in turning your life around. If you want to feel completely powerless in life, then you can choose to see that anxiety is happening to you, that life is happening to you, or that it's somehow out to get you in some way. If you want to empower yourself and take back control, then moving forward, you have to make that happen. And the only way you are going to make it happen is by educating yourself about how anxiety works and taking ownership of getting yourself from where you are now to where you want to be. Till next time.